Hello, my topic is on the screen. That's the analogs of tense interpretation in Russian embedded clauses. Absolute versus relative modality, absolute versus relative aspect. I will begin with a small introduction to recall what absolute and relative tense interpretations are. As many of you know, the category of tense requires an anchor to be interpreted. So uh, the tense use uh, should have some reference point that the event is linked to. This notion is most important for tense marking in embedded clauses. Uh, and most frequent anchors uh, for the event in an embedded clause are moment of speech. In this case, we speak of absolute interpretation and the main event the event in the main clause. And in this case, uh, we speak of the relative interpretation. Uh, here I only mean some relevant work as, for instance, Barenson, Homitsevich, Sai, and also my own work. Uh, but uh, there are much more studies uh, that, that consider uh, the problem uh, of the choice between the absolute and relative tense marking. Uh, normally, uh, in Russian edging clauses, the absolute interpretation of tense is chosen, while in complement clauses, the relative interpretation is used. Uh, let's have first an example of the absolute interpretation in edging clauses. Uh, so you uh, have a construction with, with a relative clause with the pronoun который. Я вышел погулять and встретил, и встретил человека, который вел на поводке собаку. I went walking and met a man with a dog on the leash. The two events, встретил and вел, are simultaneous. So uh, the past tense form вел in the embedded clause does not mean that the situation in the embedded clause precedes the situation in the main clause. Uh, by contrast, uh, the situation in the embedded clause uh, precedes the moment of speech. So the interpretation of the tense form is based on the moment of speech and the interpretation is absolute here. Uh, of course, uh, there are some non-canonical cases in adjective clauses. For instance, Padrichila shows that the subordinator Paka while uh, often has uh, a relative interpretation of tenses, though it introduces edging class clauses. And uh, in examples like does not mean uh, that the agency uh, is at his job in the moment of speech. The present tense form uh, refers uh, to the main clause uh, So uh, the interpretation is relative here, uh, though we have an agent clause, but that's a non-canonical case. Uh, by contrast, the relative interpretation is usual uh, for argument clauses or complement clauses, uh, where the embedded clause corresponds to a particular valency slot of the main predicate. Uh, for instance, тогда я знал, что Петя живет в том же доме, но позже он переехал. At this time, I knew that Петя lived in my house, but later on, he moved. So as Petya moved, uh, we cannot speak here that he lives in the speaker's house at the moment of speech. Uh, but the present tense form, живет, is used in the embedded clause. Why? Because the situation is simultaneous with the main situations now. So the anchor for the tense use and interpretation is the main situation. Живет is simultaneous to now. Uh, we can speak here about the relative interpretation uh, of the embedded clause tense, живет. Uh, so the main question of this research is, uh, can other semantic categories relevant for the situation, uh, mainly mood and aspect, be characterized in terms of the absolute versus relative interpretation? Can we speak of uh, relative and absolute interpretations of aspect and mood? The answer is yes, uh, but the definition of absolute versus relative interpretation must be generalized.
uh, that generalized definition will not include any mention of tense. It will simply say that in the absolute interpretation, the category uh, uh, is linked to the moment of speech. And uh, in the relative interpretation, the meaning of the uh, category is linked to the meaning of the situation in the main clause. Let's try first for the aspect. The absolute interpretation of aspect means that the aspect of the verb in the embedded clause, uh, imperfective or perfective, is chosen based on the characteristics of the speech act. And the speech act uh, is one single situation with the process properties. Uh, it's in fact process of speech. And the relative interpretation of aspect means that the aspect of the verb in the embedded clause is chosen based on the characteristics of the main situation. Uh, here is the example uh, of a relative aspect interpretation. Он иногда заходил в банк, чтобы снять деньги. Here we have a complex sentence where both situation, uh, he visited the bank and uh, to withdraw the money, are repeated. He repeatedly visited the bank and he repeatedly uh, withdrawn his money. Uh, so uh, in the main clause, everything is clear. The imperfective form zahadil is used to mark repeatedness. By contrast, in the embedded clause, the perfective form snat denotes a repeated situation. Why? Why the perfective form? Normally, perfective uh, does not refer to repeated situations. The perfective form is used because its interpretation is anchored uh, to the imperfective form zahadil. Uh, one withdrawal of money corresponds to each one visit of the bank. So the interpretation of the embedded situation snet uh, corresponds to the interpretation of the main situation. And we have a relative interpretation of aspect. Uh, by contrast, in the uh, next example, we have an absolute aspect interpretation. Он всегда заходил к нам, когда приезжал из путешествия. Uh, here, as uh, in the last example, both situations are repeated. Mm. He repeatedly visited us when he repeatedly was back from his travels. Uh, however, here, imperfective forms are used in both clauses. Why? Uh, because the interpretation uh, of the aspect in the embedded clause, Priyajan, uh, is based on the speech act. The speech act is a single situation. Uh, so uh, to interpret the aspect use in the embedded clause with respect to the speech act, uh, repeatedness must be marked. Uh, and we have an absolute interpretation of the aspect from Priyajan. Uh, what's specific for aspect uh, as compared to tense is the role of finiteness. Uh, for tense marking in Russian, infinitive is irrelevant because uh, infinitive uh, uh, does not have uh, a tense category at all, contrary to infinitives in some other languages, uh, as in Latin. In Russian, uh, no tense is marked on infinitives. By contrast, aspect is distinguished in infinitives. Uh, we have Perfective infinitives such as snyat and imperfective infinitives such as snimat. Uh, and the finiteness, the opposition of infinitive versus uh, finite form, uh, is relevant for the aspect interpretation. Uh, that's clear in examples with embedded temporal clauses. In finite temporal clauses, mainly relative, main, uh, uh, both relative and absolute aspect. Uh, is uh, chosen. Uh, by contrast, in infinitive temporal clauses, uh, we have mainly relative aspect interpretation. Let's show this on three examples. Uh, the first of them contains a subordinate после того как, after, uh, and the second and the third of them uh, contain the subordinate перед тем как, before. Uh, 
So the first example, uh, после того как, uh, is only compatible with finite clauses. Uh, so, uh, if both situations are repeated, uh, uh, repeatedness is marked on both clauses, начиналис and проходило. Uh, so we have here an absolute aspect interpretation, absolute imperfecta. Uh, by contrast, the subordinated перед тем как uh, is compatible both with uh, infinitives and finite forms. With finite forms, again, uh, repeatedness must be marked uh, on the embedded clause as well as uh, on the main clause. Не забывайте imperfective and входите imperfective. So we have here an absolute aspect interpretation. Note that uh, if uh, the infinitive form was used here, uh, it had to be vaiti and not входить. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is clear in the third example. Почему ты снимаешь штаны перед тем, как включить ноутбук? Uh, though both situation uh, are again repeated here, uh, repeatedness is only marked in the main clause, снимаешь. In the better clause, the perfective form включить and not включать is used because uh, the interpretation of this embedded clause, the infinitive clause, uh, is based on the interpretation of the main clause. Uh, so repeatedness uh, is only marked on the main clause uh, and the embedded clause interpretation uh, is linked to the main clause interpretation. We have a relative interpretation. Uh, uh, however, in purpose clause, the situation is more complicated and uh, both finite purpose clauses and non-finite purpose clauses are compatible both uh, with relative and absolute aspect interpretations. Uh, let's turn now to the absolute and relative uh, mood interpretations. Uh, these notions uh, are a little bit more problematic than with the aspect, well, but we will try um, to explain uh, what this means. Uh, first recall that uh, the modality, modality category has uh, several types of meanings. Uh, uh, what's the most relevant for this talk uh, is the epistemic type uh, that includes probability, reality, and non-reality. For instance, uh, Peter uh, must be here. Peter должен уже быть здесь, or Peter скорее всего уже здесь. However, uh, there are uh, two other types of meaning, as Plungian and Van der Rauder and Padushiva show. Uh, the ontological type uh, denotes uh, relations between the situation and the participant's properties. For instance, uh, Peter uh, can uh, solve this problem, or Peter может переплыть эту реку. What's relevant here uh, are Peter's properties, so uh, uh, his uh, intellectual ability, strength, physical form, and so on. Finally, the deontic type denotes relations between the situation and the controlling particip participants. Uh, that means that the deontic type includes meanings like prohibition, permission, and so on. For instance, теперь вы можете идти. You can go now. That means I allow you to go. In what follows, I will consider the use uh, of the Russian subjunctive mood. Uh, Dobrushina in her works shows that there are several uses of subjunctive. Uh, for instance, with matrix verbs, with some uh, irreal or purpose-like meanings. Я хочу, чтобы ты приехал, меня попросили, чтобы я призвонил, and in conditional context, uh, if the condition is real, the indicative mode form is used, если будет дождь, мы долго не прогуляем, but if the condition is irreal, uh, uh, subjunctive forms are chosen, если бы я не спохватился, студенты остались бы без оценок. Uh, what is 
absolute and relative mode interpretation. Uh, first, uh, I will say that Kratzer uh, considers that uh, model elements postulate possible worlds. Uh, uh, in the sentence like Я хочу поесть or Я хочу, чтобы вы поели, the situation хочу uh, is a real world situation. By contrast, the embedded situation поесть or чтобы вы поели is a situation in a possible world that can be realized uh, or uh, might remain unrealized. Uh, I consider that each use of a subjunctive form shifts the situation to a more irreal world with respect to the reference point. Uh, so uh, the modified uh, definitions of the absolute interpretation and the relative interpretation uh, look in the following way. The absolute interpretation is the interpretation in which the mood of the verb in the embedded clause is chosen based on the characteristics of the speech act. So uh, the subjunctive mood in the absolute interpretation <clears throat> shifts the situation to a more irreal world uh, uh, compared to the speech act, which is real. In the relative interpretation, the mood of the verb in the embedded clause is chosen based on the characteristics of the main situation. And so if the main situation has already been irreal, in the relative interpretation, the mood of the verb in the embedded clause uh, shifts the situation uh, to even more irreal world than the main clause. Uh, an example of the relative mood. Маруся прикрыла его рукой, чтобы, если вывалится, не потерялся в траве. Here, in the, main, uh, in the clause, чтобы не потерялся в траве, um, the subjunctive mood is used. Uh, the situation uh, in the embedded clause, если вывалится, is also irreal. However, irreality is only marked uh, on the clause не потерялся. Uh, and uh, the situation, uh, если вывалится, uh, belongs to the same possible world as the situation не потерялся. <coughs> uh, however, uh, the indicative mood is used because uh, the world is the same uh, as for the situation не потерялся. Uh, so we have a relative mood interpretation based on the main situation не потерялся. Uh, and now an example of the absolute mood interpretation. Я всегда хотел, чтобы настал момент, когда Вован покинул бы этот мир. Here both situations настал and покинул бы belong to the same possible world. And subjunctive is used in both cases. For настал, uh, subjunctive uh, means that the situation is less real than the uh, real situation хотела. And for, and for покинулбе, uh, the situation is also less real than the situation хотела бы. Uh, so the use of moods is absolute here and is based on the speech act situation. Uh, let's now uh, see the use of moods in complement clauses. Uh, we can see that uh, in complement clauses, uh, either the relative interpretation or the absolute interpretation can be used. Uh, you can have uh, a, a, a relative interpretation. Меня бесило бы, что половина моего заработка уходит на бездельника. So uh, the situation уходит uh, is irreal. But it's not marked for subjunctive because it's linked to the main situation меня бесило бы. It's sufficient to mark irreality on the main situation меня бесило бы. And then the situation половина моего заработка уходит is linked to бесило бы. The situation, the interpretation of mood is relative here. Uh, and uh, in the first example, that's, it's a mistake 
the interpretation is absolute here. Мне бы не понравилось, что меня бы тащили на прием к врачу. In both clauses, uh, subjunctive forms are chosen, uh, and subjunctive marks the fact that in the embedded clause меня бы тащили is less real than the speech act. So the interpretation of mood is based on the speech act and it's absolute. Uh, note that the absolute mood use and the absolute mood interpretations create uh, something we can call mixed constructions. When um, the subordinator bears a real meaning, um, consider for instance subordinators like что and когда, uh, and the form uh, in the embedded clause is irreal subjunctive. Uh, as uh, in the case, мне бы не понравилось, что меня бы тащили на прием к врачу. Uh, what specific for mood is the opposition of propositional versus conditional contexts? Uh, so, in propositional contexts, uh, mainly relative modality is used in the embedded clause. For instance, я хочу, чтобы мой сын жил у нас, когда женится. Uh, in the deepest embedded clause, когда женится, uh, the mood is relative and not absolute. Uh, so it's uh, sufficient to mark the irreality of the situation uh, in the higher clause, чтобы мой сын жил у нас. Uh, and uh, it would be strange to mark uh, the deepest embedded clause for subjunctive, когда бы женился. By contrast, the same is possible in conditional context. Uh, you can say, когда бы я женился, я бы, конечно, не пошел бы жить у Бельме. Uh, so in the deepest clause, когда бы я женился, has an absolute mood interpretation. Uh, the possible reason is that in conditionals, the rule is that each situation has to be marked as unreal. And if you have multiple uh, embedded clauses, you can mark normally each of, each of them as irreal. Uh, to use subjunctive in each of these clauses. Uh, let's now underline common features and differences of tense versus aspect versus modality, relative and absolute interpretation. First, only for mood, the relative interpretation prevails over the absolute interpretation. For tense and aspect, neither the relative nor the absolute interpretation uh, is the main one. Each of them is simply used uh, in its own uh, range of contexts and its own conditions. Then only for mood, uh, relative clauses behave in a special way. Uh, relative clauses tolerate absolute mood marking more than other types of embedded clauses. Uh, let's now turn to conclusions. Uh, I conclude that modality and aspect can be classified in terms of absolute and relative interpretations, as well as tense. Uh, the conditions of choice of absolute versus relative interpretation are not an identical for the three categories, tense, aspect, and modality. For aspect, finiteness is relevant. Infinitive clauses tend to be marked for relative aspect, while finite uh, mainly for absolute one. In finite complement clauses, by contrast, absolute aspect is more usual than absolute uh, tense. For modality, the opposition of propositional modality, this conditional context is relevant. Uh, for mood, the relative interpretation outranks the absolute one, and this reflects the fact that modality characterizes big, big parts of tense. Uh, by contrast, a spectral and temporal characteristics can be different for different verbs or different situations in the same part of text. Uh, the general conclusion is that the opposition of absolute versus relative interpretation is not a special temporal phenomenon. It's related to the degree of autonomy of the embedded clause and to the reference point the speaker links uh, the interpretation to. 
uh, and uh, these solutions of the speaker uh, can reflect uh, in the um, choice of tense aspect modality or maybe some other meanings uh, and uh, the interaction between interpretations of tense aspect and modality uh, has uh, uh, to be studied in more detail. Uh, these are some references. Thank you for your attention.